Okay, so we learned about the thalamus. Now let's talk about where those fibers go to the cortex. So this is lecture 5-3, and I'm probably going to split this up into multiple parts. So the cortex can be classified into different regions. We have an allocortex and a neocortex. The allocortex means old cortex. And of course, cortex means bark because the different bumps look like bark on a tree. So old cortex here, I've outlined it in the uh, black color, and we can see the allocortex mostly composed of structures of the, um, the diencephalon we talked about last time, the thalamus, the, um, the uh, striatum, the caudate, the putamen, uh, the hippocampus as well, but also the, um, the epithalamus, the hypothalamus, uh, the cingulate uh, cortex, so these are all examples. Uh, the insular cortex as well, parahippocampal gyrus. These are all examples of older uh, cortical structures. And these older cortical structures uh, are different in that they have only three, maybe five layers within them. Whereas neocortical layer structures have six layers, uh, six specific layers. So... Um, the neocortical, uh, the neocortex is thicker because of that, uh, and so it makes up all of the rest of the cortex that you see here in red, the primary somatomotor, somatosensory, et cetera, et cetera, frontal, uh, all of those are part of the neocortex. And this <clears throat> increased number of layers increases the processing that can occur within the cortex itself because we're getting information uh, coming in from multiple different sources, not just the sensory information going to layer four, but now we're going to talk about what layers, uh, you know, one, two, three, uh, and six are doing as well. And um, so we have information from multiple different association cortices, association gyri within the brain sending information of a multitude of varieties to one primary region for processing. And so that's what all these different layers are doing. Uh, so in smooth ra in rats, the uh, cortex is smooth because it doesn't require the density, doesn't have as much uh, processing going on as it has in primates uh, and uh, hominids and hominids like us. So um, that is uh, the benefit of the neocortex. Just imagine the processing we could do with seven layers. Oh my goodness. So also we're talking about white matter tracts when we talk about the cortex because these white matter tracts, the corona radiata, the uh, commissural fibers, the corpus callosum, these tracts are important for sending that association information uh, to other regions of the brain and to other uh, cortical uh, regions and across the hemispheres. So what do the cortical layers look like? What's inside the cortical layers? So here we have um, a handy little drawing of the six different cortical layers and their names. Within the uh, neocortex, there are a multitude of different cell types. Pyramidal neurons, pyramidal cells, are, uh, they predominate in layers two, three, and five. We know that five is the output layer of the cortex to uh, subcortical regions. So, for instance, upper motor neurons are layer five uh, pyramidal cells. So, upper motor neurons in particular are called Betz cells, B A E T Z, uh, and they, they're located in layer five. They're outputting from layer five down the spinal cord tract. <clears throat> uh, we'll talk about, so depending upon how long the axon has to be, how far away the information is going, the soma will be larger or smaller, uh, depending. Now moving to layer four, we have non-pyramidal cells called uh, stellate cells, and these specialize in receiving and processing information within the one cortical layer. Uh, so these stellate cells are used in layer four in particular to receive information coming into uh, that layer from, you know, possibly far away. 
And then layer six, we have fusiform cells. So these are for uh, long distance processing, sending information out of the cortex. <clears throat> so uh, what are some other things we see within these cortical layers? Well, of course we have dendrites and depending on uh, where these dendrites are coming from, these dendrites uh, can span all different layers of the neocortex. So these are receiving information. They can process that information locally before a pyramidal cell might send that information out of that region of the cortex. Um, okay, uh, so uh, we have in layer two the small pyramidal cells, granule cells, uh, and so that's processing information, sending it out uh, long distance. The medium-sized pyramidal cells in layer three, uh, they're uh, associating information to and from other cortical regions. So say you have some primary visual information in the primary uh, visual cortex. That information gets processed and it's sent out to an associative uh, cortex, maybe V2 or V3. Uh, uh, so the secondary and tertiary motor, uh, 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 visual cortices in the occipital cortex. And so these medium pyramidal cells are uh, likely the ones sending that information to another cortical region, an association region. Then of course the stellate cells uh, receiving information, processing it within that cortical region. And finally, layer five, the uh, largest pyramidal cells are found here. These are going to send information not to another cortical region, but down uh, the brain stem, uh, maybe down to the spinal cord. So like upper motor neurons. And then fusiform cells in layer six. Uh, these are going to output to primarily the thalamus. So the cortex and the thalamus need to talk to each other. This is how they do it, through layer six fusiform cells. And then finally, below layer six, we have the corona radiata, the white matter tracks from these output layers, uh, uh, two, three, five, and six. Now, uh, we should talk, spend a few minutes talking about the uh, pyramidal cell and its structure. Uh, so it has, uh, its, you know, its, its cell body is located in layer five, and that cell body can be uh, large or small, depending upon what it's doing, how far away it's sending the information. But the largest um, layer five pyramidal cells are the Betz cells, the upper motor neurons in the precentral uh, gyrus, the primary motor cortex. All those words mean the same thing. Uh, so um, we also have dendrites, and the dendrites from these layer five pyramidal cells extend through all of the uh, higher uh, cortical layers. So they're receiving information from every layer and processing that information. And they're receiving information from the stellate cells in layer four, and processing that information to determine uh, if they should fire an action potential down their axon. <clears throat> they also have lateral dendrites uh, that are receiving information in layer five. Uh, so collaterals from other uh, layer two, layer three pyramidal cells, for instance, which are informing output in that layer as well. Uh, so the apical dendrites from higher layers, lateral, dendrites from the same layer, uh, and another important concept, uh, and then of course you have the axon that sends the information out of the cortex to the white matter tracts, the corona radiata. Another important concept here is the dendritic spines. Dendritic spines are these little bumps on a dendrite that receive and grow out toward a synapse. So, the synapse is not just growing toward the dendrite, but the dendrite is growing toward a synapse. And the more uh, synapses there are, the more dendritic spines there are, the more information that neuron is processing. So as a synapse fires on a, another neuron, a dendritic spine is formed, and that dendritic spine grows uh, and strengthens its connection with the synapse, uh, the more it fires. So the, the synapses that, that fire the most 
get the strongest dendritic spines growing out toward them. That results in that pathway being activated more easily in the future, so it doesn't, the, so it doesn't have to, the synapse doesn't have to release as much neurotransmitter to, for, to create the same function. So um, that way that, that neural pathway doesn't burn out, it, it, it can just uh, function more easily. Now let's talk about the neural connections, the neocortical connections that occur uh, to and from the cortical layers. So we have what are called projection efferents. So projection efferents send their information out of the cortex to a subcortical target. That subcortical target may be the anterior horn of the spinal cord. That subcortical target may be the facial motor nucleus. It may be the trigeminal motor nucleus. Uh, it may be, in the case of layer six, it may be the striatum, or it may be the thalamus. But at any rate, these projections out of the cortex are called projection connections, projection efferents, because they are projecting out of the cortex to a subcortical structure. Then we have association efferents and, and commissural efferents. Association efferents send their information to another, uh, to another uh, region of the hemisphere, of the same hemisphere. So that's the example of, view of uh, the primary uh, visual cortex sending information to the tertiary motor cortex, the association or not motor, the visual cortex, um, the V1 visual cortex to the association V3 cortex, and then to either the parietal cortex or the temporal cortex. Those are our association efferents. Commissural efferents cross hemispheres. So the corpus callosum is full of commissural efferents. The anterior commissure full of uh, commissural efferents. The posterior commissure is not full of uh, commissural efferents because the posterior commissure connects the tectum uh, together. It does not connect cortices. So the uh, posterior commissure is not one of these connective cortical uh, uh, connection tracts. Uh, so what are some inputs into each neocortical region? So these association and commissural fibers will connect to any layer that they want to of the target uh, neocortical or, or cortical region. Uh, so it could be the amygdala, it could be the hippocampus as well, so not just neocortical connections. But uh, so uh, from layers two or three association to any layer in the target cortex, any layer that they need to uh, based on the strength of their connection and the importance of their information uh, as to where they go. We also have projections from subcortical structures uh, up to the cortex. So these projections might be from gain-setting nuclei uh, like serotonin, acetylcholine, uh, or um, from the reticular activating system up into the cortex to regulate uh, awareness and arousal and uh, the focus of our attention on specific stimuli that are occurring. For instance, if you see the saber-toothed tiger chasing you, then your awareness of everything else melts away because that saber-toothed tiger information gets priority in your cortex because of these gain-setting nuclei in your reticular activating system saying, this is a novel and dangerous stimulus our amygdala is saying that it's uh, something to be feared. This information is important. The butterfly that just flew by your peripheral vision, not important. Ignore that. Ignore the apples in the tree. Just run from the frickin' saber-toothed tiger. Now we have some uh, projection fibers uh, going to layer four. And this is that standard case we've always known about since day one where we have uh, somatosensory information going to inserting and in, in, uh, innervating layer four of the neocortex input to layer four. 
Uh, so, <clears throat> um, now, having all this information in mind, you can think to yourself, well, each individual region of the cortex has different properties, has different functional elements to it. And so the size of these layers is going to change in different areas of the brain. You can see that as a diagram here in the primary sensory cortex, in the post-central gyrus, your layer four is going to be large, uh, probably the largest of just about anywhere, maybe the occipital cortex, the primary visual cortex, V1, is going to uh, you know, have a large uh, layer four area. As we get into association cortices, that are associating information, but not, but they're also outputting that information, then that layer four is smaller and we get larger association cortices. Uh, we get larger output areas. Then we go to the primary motor cortex where there's no sensory input into layer four. Layer four is basically absent. Uh, then we see that we have a large layer five because we're doing a lot of primary subcortical output down into the brainstem and spinal cord. And so we have large layer five pyramidal neurons called Betz cells. And so that concept, uh, you know, is, is um, going to help you understand future concepts when we talk about functional areas of the cortex. So I'll leave that for part two of this lecture series on the cortex. Thanks for listening.